I don't believe you've thought a lot about what you're saying. I still don't think you have any chance of getting the results you want. I'm sorry, dear. The first experimental results are positive. Listen. I've been doing all this not just for myself. I did it so you could have everything you want. And don't forget it. Please, Professor. Dr. Wilkes is in the reactor room. He might come in. What I meant was that creating life, animal, vegetable, or even human, and obtaining mutations with all the possible genetic variations could easily lead to the most terrible results. 
I'm on the verge of discovering a secret that will lead to immense power. Do you understand, Lois? Just think of it. I can create an immortal man. I can grow a forest where there was only desert. And destroy the balance of nature? Is that what you're hoping for? No, it's not. <laughs> That does not matter. I cannot explain. We do not have the time. Please come with us. Don't force us to use violence. Why should I go? This is my house. What do you want with me? Who are you? I said there is no time to explain. You have no choice. No one can help you. According to Lois, the professor was on the verge of an important discovery, the creation of life. Officially, we know nothing about it. The professor would have communicated the results of his recent studies only after the last experiment, which is still continuing in his laboratory's atomic reactor. Yes, of course, the atomic reactor. When they went, it was still functioning. But I understand that the professor made several modifications and... Uh... And? No one else is able to touch it. Dr. Wilkes always maintained that without the professor, an uncontrolled reaction would destroy the entire city, space base included. Because the reactor will be entering the critical phase eight days, 14 hours, and three minutes from now, after which a chain reaction takes place. I want Professor Carr here before that moment. Any questions? Have you learned anything about what happened to the satellite guarding space sector H? Our technicians confirm everything Dr. Wilkes said about the professor's disappearance. The presence of a spaceship is obviously connected with the satellite's breakdown. It was sabotaged to create a corridor in our defenses. However, they only sabotaged the alarm system. Isn't that so? Quite right. So the alien craft's range and course have been preserved in the computer's memory. Controls inserted. Solar panels open. We're all ready, Captain. Right. You take over. Mm -hmm. 
Follow me with the camera. Okay, John. Julie, since the captain doesn't even notice you, in spite of the torch you've been carrying for him for quite a while, why don't you just drop him off on the satellite? And take the rest of us back home, huh? That's a good idea. I'll remember it. And apply it to you. When you're on a remote planet, somewhere in the galaxy, so far away that nobody could find you. I was just trying to give you a little friendly advice. So don't come and cry on my shoulder when you're in trouble, right? <laughs> I'm ready to go out. Check the automatic system. All in order, Captain. Five seconds to lock decompression. Stand by. Okay. Here I go. at the memory bank of the main computer. Everything all right, John? Yeah, fine. There's a call from the spaceship Trissy on special mission. This is the captain of the Trissy. I have to talk to Commander King. Go ahead. The computer memory bank holds the coordinates of the course followed by the alien spacecraft with the kidnappers of Professor Carr and Lois. All that's important is their base planet. Where the devil is it? We can deduce that from the direction they follow. The coordinates are North Pole Earth, 90 degrees west, and 810 north. Can the memory be used to produce an analysis of the maximum speed the alien spaceship can achieve by any chance? Only a quarter of what mine can do if it's necessary. Only I think accelerating in that way is taking a lot of chances. Have you calculated the hypothetical meeting point in case of pursuit? With our power at maximum, it will take four days to overtake them. Four days? It'll be a miracle if you ever make it. Yet our lives and those of our countrymen are in your hands. What are your orders, Commander? Start pursuit of the alien ship immediately. Try all that's possible to free Professor Carr and his assistant. I've already given out those orders, Commander. Over and out. Void. Bitch. <laughs> Sorry. Acceleration 30%. Motors on. Jets at minimum. 30%. Carried out. Compare radar data with signal direction. 
Beta angle 22 degrees. Tangent beta angle 80 degrees. Velocity 500,000 meters per second. Signals noted in direction of established course. Main force constant. Coordinates verified. Signal direction verified. Course confirmed. Increase jet power by 100,000 meters per second. Just what I needed. If we maintain this velocity, we'll catch up to them quite soon. Have you notified the base? No, I haven't yet, because I have a sort of strange presentiment. Is there something worrying you or what? I don't know, but I feel that my hands are tied. In what way? How do you mean? As long as Lois is in their power, there's nothing I can do about it. Obviously, these damned aliens will take advantage of holding hostages to dictate terms. If I were you, I wouldn't worry about that. Let's just catch this spaceship and stop them. I just like to see them trying to dictate conditions or terms. Their spaceship's blocked. Until that happens. The message for the captain. What is it? Enemy spaceship seen approaching. Get the facts from the computer. Come on. There were three of them at first, John. But now one's disappeared and the others are starting to attack us. Sonia, get me the base. Spaceship Trissy calling space station Sirius. Confirm identity of alien spaceship. Command station to spaceship Trissy. You were right. Confirmed. Those are two alien spaceships. Attack them. All right. We're attacking. Julia, give me the coordinates for our offensive weapon. Roger, you take the one on the right. Jack, you take the left one. All right. Remember, we have to destroy them with the first volley. We have no time to lose. Carr and Lois are undoubtedly on ship number three. Range 1082. Angle of elevation 13 degrees. Direction alpha 19 degrees. 10 seconds from now, target reaches coordinates. Minus 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, fire! He's trying to get away. Fire! On target. <laughs> Damage to drive section. Reactor water tanks hit. Ship is drifting seven degrees west. Full force, ten seconds. Activate auxiliary engine. Reduce thrust on right. All done, sir. There's something wrong. I've lost contact with station Sirius, Captain. I don't think the auxiliary plant is strong enough to re-establish contact. I want to know where we are and whether we're able to reach that planet, little asteroid. Right, sir. Never catch the aliens like this. Asteroid Azar lies 200,800 kilometers distant. Alter course three degrees east. 
It is a minor world of no scientific interest, chiefly basalt rock, no important minerals, inhabitants peaceful and friendly. Sounds like a sensational place for a weekend. You think we can get in a little fishing? We'll be disembarking on the asteroid in half an hour, so don't worry about it. Ready three degrees east. Check. Okay. We've lost contact, Commander. What has happened to the ship? I don't understand. But it's the beginning of the end. They're getting away. By ourselves, we can't stop them. Launch telecamera. Done, sir. Confirm operational phase for parking orbit. Ship in parking orbit. Asteroid is 600 kilometers below. Prepare module release for descent to surface. Module release ready. Have the computer analyze radiation. Roger, Paul, Sonia and Julie, come with me. Find out if there's any possibility of repairing the damage. Yes. Roger, go get our equipment ready. Data analysis, oxygen 18%, nitrogen 65%, atmosphere similar to Earth, surface air temperature 3 degrees above zero. Radiation traces not dangerous for limited exposure. Open outer airlock door. Outer airlock door open. Telescopic stair. Functioning. Ready to go. All right, put on your anti-radiation space suits. Come on, let's go. indicates the presence of water somewhere near those caves over there. Good. <laughs> I think we better get to work. Let's start by seeing how much damage has really been done.
Julie, are you sure you read the direction finder accurately? Can you understand? I am leader of these people. Yes, I understand, thanks to this electronic translator. Tell us what else you want with the unfortunate tribes of Azar, men of Anthor. No, we haven't come from Anthor. We come from a very far away planet called Earth. We were on the trail of some alien kidnappers when two of their ships attacked us and managed to damage our ship. We just want to repair it. Stop lying. You are men and women of Anthor. You need not hope to escape. I will crush you like insects. Bring one of them here. <laughs> Listen, Kuba, we landed on this asteroid by pure chance. Believe me, we're not enemies of yours. However, there are friends waiting on our ship who are ready to help us and to destroy you. So set us free before it's too late. Don't talk, John! Do something! Captain Atreci. Captain Atreci. What's going on? footsteps, John. Careful. Okay. Look out. Did you see anything else on the ship's detector screen? The monitors have recorded the arrival of a spaceship similar to the ones we've destroyed. Fortunately, they didn't see it. If there's any sign of danger, don't hesitate to use the ship's arsenal. Have you re-established contact with base? It's impossible. We don't have enough energy. How about the repairs? They've been completed. Someone found a water supply. We analyzed it and filled up. We can leave whenever you like, John. OK, sir. Keep an eye on that other saucer. If we need any assistance, I'll give you a call. Over and out. It's crazy like a harvest of human flesh. Did you see how those bracelets work? Let's see 
teach these gold men a lesson. Energy chargers burn the flesh off your bones, my friend. Thank you for your help. You have mighty weapons indeed, and the people of Anthor possess nothing similar. I told you that. It isn't that we enjoy killing, but when our lives are in danger, we mustn't hesitate. But we can also use these weapons to do other things. Look, I'll show you. I'll keep it as a souvenir, Kuva. <laughs> Release all the others. As you see, we are a race of humanoids, but we are different from you. Our physical structure has adapted to the environment in which we live. And practically all of our people have their eyes enclosed in a thick cartilaginous layer which serves to protect them from the dangerous radiation in the caverns where we dwell. Like many others, however, I was forced to undergo an operation on Anthor, where they need worker slaves with normal vision. Now, if I remain in my homeland, I am fated to go blind. Red alert. Alien spaceship attacking. Coordinates for offense rocket launching. Target 35 degrees east, 4 degrees north. Elevation 22 degrees. Plane angle 31. Test the alien ship for organic life. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Negative. Four, six, three, two, one, five. The scientists of Anthor have reached the point where they can prolong life indefinitely, but the process imposes such a strain on their tissues that they've lost the power of procreation. To avoid extinction, they transplant into their bodies young organs taken from our people. That's why they kidnapped Karen and Lois. The professor has discovered the secret of creating artificial life. We must free them somehow and take them back to Earth. I will lead you to Anthor. I worked for many years on the construction of the Imperial Palace there, and I know the layout perfectly. I'm sure you'll find your friends inside it. No, no. Commander King doesn't think that. He's entirely opposed to large-scale evacuation. That would simply produce panic. And besides, the Council of Ministers go along with it. Hmm. As for the Tracy, we've had no news. We haven't re-established contact, so there's still no way of stopping the reactor. Then what are we supposed to do? Just wait until it explodes? 
and destroys the entire city? I'm afraid there's very little else we can do. But we must take every precaution to avoid word of this leaking out, or we'll have more death and destruction than they had in the planet wars. Any progress, sir? It's no use. There's nothing we can do. Even our greatest experts are baffled. Nobody knows how to prevent the damn thing from exploding. You're right. No one. Only Professor Carr. Roger. Yes, Cooper. Why is it that when John isn't here, neither is Julie? No, so you've noticed it too. The only person who hasn't realized that Julie loves John is John. But why? She's a beautiful woman. Yes, that's true. The trouble is, John's in love with another girl, who's a prisoner on Anthor, and he wants to set her free. Ah, now I see. And now he's on to it, too. Yes. Yeah. Auxiliary motor off. Check computer printout for all security data on Planetfall. Printout check in process. Reduce jets to minimum. Jets reduce to minimum. Correct course five degrees. Maintain present velocity. Beginning countdown for surface contact. Minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Atmospheric density and composition approximate to Earth's. Open the airlock. Over there, the city lies beyond those walls. We have to make our way to the mouth of the old tunnel. It leads from the quarries they use for most of the buildings and comes out directly beneath the Central Palace Foundation. We better hurry. Yeah, let's go. What's worrying you, John? It seems incredible that these tunnels are unguarded. The laboratories are right up here.
Ah. Captain Boyd. Dear John, how extraordinary to see you here. I must admit I'm most impressed at the courage shown by you and your men. I must point out, however, that it would have been somewhat more desirable had you... Where's Lois? Oh, she's in excellent health. But I was about to tell you something interesting. Something most interesting. The courage displayed by you and your men could have been put to a better use. What do you mean by that, Professor? Can you explain yourself better? Arrest them! They are the terrestrials the Empress was expecting. Knocked out our guns. Roger and Kuba, over here. Everybody else, take clear of those swords. Computer. Something went wrong, John. The computer didn't mention any sign of life near us at all. So we were taken by surprise. Take them away. I've wasted enough time on them.
mighty empress. These terrestrials have come among us to take away the last hope of immortal life from the people of the planet Anthor. Lois. Lois. Bow your head, terrestrial. So we condemn them to become subjects for Professor Carr's experiment. They will be the guinea pigs the professor needs to perfect the machine he had constructed on this planet, identical to the one he left on Earth. It will enable him to create every form of life from nothing. Take the prisoners away. Last. No one will be able to oppose the plans I made so brilliantly. The only ones who could have are captured. Well, uh, now I can use them as guinea pigs to ensure complete success. I think you ought to keep both your feet on the earth. Uh, on the earth? Never. This is our planet now. And here, I will realize my dreams. Of power and glory. Yes. But don't forget, I agreed to become empress, only to save your life and mine. Yes, but it was I who persuaded them to accept you when the old empress died. What if you did? You know I agreed because I realized that Earth would send out somebody to try to find us. I simply had to gain time. I don't think I quite understand. I don't really see what you're trying to say. Can you explain more clearly? You're right. I will. You like me. There's no doubt about that. None. It has now become a vital necessity to have you. Every conquest has a price. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. The price I ask, then, is our friend's freedom and the chance for them to go back to Earth. If there's a plausible reason for it, I could probably accept. You asked me to be more explicit. I did. In fact, Explicit enough? In return for the lives of our friends, I offer you myself. All right. I accept. Lois, I'd like to know what game you're playing. What are you doing? Why don't you give me an explanation? This is a very powerful disintegrator. Kill the guards when I distract their attention. Ah! You'll be glad to know that the reason I'm here is because I have some good news for you. But first, I want to know if your spaceship has been damaged. Yes, it was. But we've repaired it. Good. Then you'll be able to leave immediately. John. A 
touching scene, eh, Julia? I think it's revolting. Hey, Lois, don't forget about all the rest of us. Why don't you set us free first? Then you can get on with the romance. Everybody okay? Oh, John. If you knew how much I've dreamed of this moment. <sighs> she kissed him. She kissed him. Come on, man. Let's go. You gave the alarm. You shouldn't have kissed him! I had to persuade them to kill the guards. How else could I have done it? Then he doesn't mean anything to you? For me, there's only one man who counts, and that's you, my darling. All right. Where are they now? They're waiting in the underground passageway for someone to guide them to their spaceship. But now, after the alarm, the passageways are full of soldiers. We'll have to take them out through one of those secret exits. Yes. You take care of it. I have work to do. Too dangerous for us to wait down there any longer. Now what are we supposed to do? The old fool sounded the alarm. It won't be any picnic getting out of this beehive, but we'll have to try somehow, and quickly too, before they seal all the exits. Then let's go. Hurry. Kuba, come on. I know how to prepare. 
prevent their escape. But I need the professor and the empress alive. It's an invisible energy screen. The raptor went through it and was atomized. Look out! We have to get out of here before they cut us down. Isn't there any way to get through that door? I'll have to find the circuit table and cut it. I'll need this. I don't know. I was watching the professor. You're wasting your time on that guy. Why don't you get interested in someone else? A nice fellow like me, for instance. One blow can kill a man. But we're fighting against robots. John, I found a switch box for the door. The way is clear now. Great. Did you know they were just robots? No. The way is all clear now. Let's go. everything we can do. We sought the help of the most brilliant scientists in the whole world, but it was useless. Or even worse, because according to Professor Prokofiev, their tampering may have accelerated the reaction. It's almost as if the professor arranged it on purpose to frighten us. If only we could get in touch with the spaceship so we'd know if there was any hope of their returning. Anyway, don't stop transmitting. Just keep trying.
Right. Get ready for takeoff. Put the professor in an anti-acceleration rig. Yes, sir. Ready for takeoff. Will you come this way, please? Tony, you keep trying to establish contact with Earth base. Yes, Captain. My figures say the reactor is entering the critical phase. John, I'm afraid when we get there, it's going to be too late to do anything about it. The important thing is to at least establish contact. Here come our golden boys. Activate protector screens. Navigation plan form. All ready. Force tape. Insert it. Functions activated. Control pressure. OK. Maneuver control. Green. Navigation computer. In function. I don't think they like it. Let's get away from here. Wait a moment, Captain. What is it? Don't tell me those tin soldiers have managed to cause more trouble. Something's wrong with the computer. What exactly? Well, one of the secondary circuits of the computer is damaged in its primary section. Which means? It means that part of the computer isn't working, but I don't know why it is. How do we fly out? Julia, there's no time to repair it. Can you do anything? Use the manual button. That's going to be dangerous. It's our only chance. Let's go. Contact. <laughs> in the computer secondary section. It feels marvelous to be going home with you. <laughs> you trying to smash into some deserted planet, are you, Julie? <laughs> sleep a few hours. And he'll be quite normal when he wakes up again. Listen, Paul, what do you... Contact with base established. Commander King wants to talk to you, Captain. Mm-hmm. Let me know as soon as he wakes up. All right. I already know what King wants to ask me. Congratulations, Captain. Just been informed that your mission has been a complete success. I can tell you we were all quite worried about you. Your new crew member is an android, I take it. No, he's no android. He's a humanoid. Kuba came from Azar to help us. Well, tell your friend we're happy to have him as our guest. Now, let's move on to something more serious. Here, we still have the pressing problem of the atomic reactor. Every attempt to unprime it has failed. According to our experts, it can stand another three hours. After that, it will explode, and the results will be disastrous. The only person who can solve the problem is Professor Carr. Yeah, I understand, but... Uh... But what? What's the matter? The solution is obvious. Get me the professor, and everything will be resolved. The professor is resting under very heavy sedation at the moment. Well, tell the doctor to do everything he can to wake him up long enough to give us the formula so we can unprime that damn reactor. God knows this is no time for the professor to be sleeping. Right. Then I'll see what I can do. Sonia, get me the doctor. Yes, sir. Paul, the situation at the base is getting critical. Commander King absolutely insists that he has to speak with Carr. 
Do whatever you can to enable him to talk with him. But what can I do? I gave him some psychotin a little while ago. Listen, within three hours, the atomic reactor is going to explode, destroying the base and the whole city with it. You have to revive the professor somehow or other, because he's the only person who can save us from disaster. Do you understand? All right. I'll have a try. How do you feel, Professor? Tired. It'd be risky to use a stimulant. But what happened? We rescued you and Lois, and we're going back to Earth. You were unconscious for quite a while. Now to recover, to wake up, I need this machine here. Please. Do it for me. Set the dial to point at 20 degrees. 20 degrees, hmm? Yes. Just turn that little knob on the side. Huh? I see. 20 degrees. Good boy. Now press the button. Which button? The red button. Red Get me the doctor again. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Well? Sorry, there's no answer. That's very strange. Take the controls. Dead. I don't understand it. What's going on around here? Why would anyone want to kill them? Wait. Look. That means the gold men are not far away. The androids. They can't. They can't possibly be near. Try again. I don't see how we could lose contact over such a short distance. It's no use, Commander. There's a magnetic field blocking all our signals. I don't understand it. There's something very strange about Captain Boyd's behavior. Well, if it's some kind of magnetic storm, there's very little we can do about it. I think he's probably having a lot of trouble as well, in this very moment. Welcome. It seems that without you, the spaceship can't get through the satellite defense system. I don't get it. What's the meaning of all this? I would have thought it was obvious. Only up to a point. You've taken command of the ship, right? Yes. It was easy. Why did you kill Carr and the doctor? I didn't kill them both. Carr killed the doctor, then I killed him, because the professor was no longer part of my plan. So, you've got a plan. Perhaps you're planning to murder everybody. Not necessarily. It depends. Depends on what? We're at the head of a large fleet of Anthor spaceships. 
If you'll help us to get it through the satellite defense system, we'll become the absolute masters of the universe. You must be out of your mind. However, you've still got one chance to save yourself. Tell me the formula for unpriming the reactor that you and the mad professor forgot to turn off. Poor John. You still want to save me. You must love me a lot. I've been listening to all the messages from the commanding officer of your station. In less than three hours' time, the base will cease to exist. <laughs> How about this? You tell the base the formula for the reactor, and I'll get you through the defense satellite. No bargains, John. I'm afraid you have to do whatever I say. Otherwise, all of you will be killed. <laughs> Perhaps you didn't understand me. You can't kill all of us. No. No. Otherwise, you'll never get back to Earth, my dear. Is that clear? <laughs> The gold men can't kill us. <laughs> Get him, you guys! <laughs> automatically controlled by the satellite security system. coming within range. Insert code tape to neutralize defensive reaction. John, don't be stupid. I'll kill you all, one by one, until one of you inserts that tape. Stop fighting or I'll kill him. Uh. Why did you kill her? Don't worry, I didn't kill her. She's just stunned. Thank you, Julie. If it hadn't been for Cuba, Lois's plan might have worked. He really saved the day. I think we should take up a collection and build him a monument at the space station. Let's clear away the wreckage, boys. We have reestablished contact with you. This is base calling. We've reestablished radio contact with the Trissy, Commander. Captain Boyd is reporting. Boyd, what's been going on? What else has happened? I'm afraid it's bad news. Professor Carr has been killed. My God. <sighs> Dr. Wilkes here says Professor Carr used to make notes on memory slides. And the professor used to carry some of them around with him because he was very forgetful. He was always referring to them.
It will not be long now before the Great Empress leads our fleet of spaceships against the Earth. Contact. These are memory slides, just like the ones Professor Carr always carried with him. Is this one? We have a similar one. Take a look. Well, Cooper, I found it in the professor's laboratory. Thank goodness for that. My compliments to him. Thanks to Cooper, we've reached the end of a real nightmare. Alien ships have been sighted by reconnaissance. Cooper, come with me. We'll take out the fighters. Why leave the ship? We can defend ourselves here. Why not? There's not enough energy for our tail deflectors. Roger. Jack, let's go. Is there anything I can do? You can learn how to use our weapons. It's a marvelous feeling. It's a lot better than piloting a space fighter. <laughs> right, let's check our coordinates. Our objective is at 1.5. Roger, you're too far out. Come closer to Jack. Remember to stick close to our satellite. This is the right area. We're going to effect a frontal attack. I'll cover you from the rear. Maintain radio silence now until we sign them. At least the enemy shouldn't be expecting us. Good luck, boys. We're ready to attack them. General Gonad will take the majority of the enemy spaceship flying in his own formation. So then we can attack them on the weak side. Since the computer's broken, you'll have to use the manual controls. There's no problem using them. Without the computer, we're in trouble. Let's hope for the best. Squadron leader. We must attack them and destroy them, one by one. Hey, Dad, get right on top of them. Sonia, start the countdown. Ten seconds to ideal range. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Fire! What's wrong? I missed them all, every one.
When you fire, you have to follow your computerized monitor. Get too far away. Jack, come back here. Yeah, but I can't see him. Roger, can you see Jack? There's so much firing going on here, I can't see anything. Disappeared. No, there he is. One of his stabilizers is knocked out. Another formation of aliens is in close pursuit. At 1.2. John, you gotta be careful. Your other's coming. In a few minutes, they'll be on you. Check. We're ready. Stay in contact. Over and out. coming in on top of you. Be careful. I don't see anything. Where are they? I can't see them. There's one now, right overhead. Hold on. I'll be right there. Thanks, Chief. Now I'll get one of them. all the protective screening, but the computer is still only functioning partially. I'm fed up. I haven't hit one of them yet. <laughs> it's better to try firing in front of the mobile object and correct the telemeter reading it manually. Great idea. We'll try it. Okay, Cooper. The telemeter readings have been inserted in your sight. We have to eliminate those fighters of theirs, or we have lost all chance of success. They are so small and rapid that our energy projectiles have no hope of reaching their targets. The Empress to squadron leaders. Concentrate on the outer two fighters. Eliminate them immediately. Leave the other one, the last fighter, to me. <laughs> Hey, John, where are you? I'm in a trap. Fantastic, John. 
John. Thanks very much for helping me out again. John, help me! I'm surrounded here! I'm coming, Jack. Protected now, Roger. I'll cover you. There's a saucer coming in over your head. I see two more arriving at 0 0.5. I can't shake them off, John. I'll take care of them, Roger. But look out. You're getting too close to the satellite. We're trapped. There's not enough room to maneuver. Hold on, Roger. John, Roger, come back in. There are too many saucers now. We can't hope to hold out much longer. Conditions like this, it's your duty to return to the ship. That's right, only it's not all that easy. Johnny, this is the moment to finish them off. Other formations arriving. Some more saucers are arriving. Try to get away and get back as soon as you can. That's an order. Roger, break free. Quickly. I'd just like to get one more of them. Don't get so far out. Stay near me so I can cover you. No, I don't want you to run any risks for my sake. Oh, it's not easy to get away from me. but managed to hold this jalopy together. I want to get that guy. Roger, no. Don't go so far out. Try to get back to the spaceship. They might be able to help you. She's clear out of control now. We did our best, old sport. try to. Commander King, how about it? You are through, John, at last. Commander, is there no way we can help them? We can't afford to be generous. If we open our defense system for even an instant, we risk an invasion. I'm afraid there's just nothing we can do for them. We banked everything on our satellite defense system. Try to hold out, John. can't shake off that fighter, he's had it. You're all alone now, John. 
Sean. You'd better surrender. Who said that? Where are you? Are you satisfied, Chief? Was that how you taught me to do it? Julie, how about that? You did a really great job there. Just let me have a chance at some action, John. <laughs> Julie, sweetheart, I'm beginning to think I can't get along without you. It's about time. I was wondering how long it would take you to realize that. Attention. This is your Empress speaking. Leave the one that's just arrived to me. I'll deal with it. Rockets with multiple heads, that's what we ought to be using. We could destroy their whole fleet in minutes. I think it's our only hope. Wait, I have an idea. Yeah, what? Torpedoes. They contain hundreds of energy grenades that all explode simultaneously. Why haven't we been using them? They were intended for use in atmospheres. I'll have to modify the explosive system. Hey, John, what happened? You had a cute little saucer sneaking up on you. But I took care of him. How long do you think they'll succeed in holding out? Not long. Yet those two are amazing. Look out, Julie. There's one behind you. I'll blast it. I'm yours, John. I've always loved you, and you used to love me. I'm going to destroy Julie for stealing your love. I should have destroyed you, Lois. Where are you, damn it? John, there isn't any choice. I have to kill Julie. I have to in the name of Anthor. Get out of the way. Disappear and you'll be safe, Lois. No. You'll have to decide. You have two seconds. I've got Julie in my sights, John. Julie, what do you think? It's your decision. You make it. OK. I really have no choice. I'm sorry. With this weapon, it'll be child's play and a real pleasure to destroy those monsters. Minus seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> I finally managed to settle the score with those monsters of Anthor. <laughs> Prepare to open a passage through the satellite defenses. When I think of all that's happened, it makes life fantastic. At this point, I feel like I'm dreaming, John. It's wonderful to be alive after being so near to death. <laughs> 